The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind how important it is today more than ever to stand up for the protection of innocent life, particularly when we see the kind of threat. And by the way, it's not live birth abortion. It's not infanticide. It is murder. If you take the baby home and kill the baby at home, it's murder. It's the same thing's true at the hospital. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Friday, you bastards. It's Friday, you bastards. Must be time for CPAC. Crazy. CPAC, off the hook, literally loony CPAC. I, I think CPAC now stands for crazy conservatives or crazy people acting uh, crazy for cash or conservatives acting crazy for cash. That's what I've settled on. Conservative people acting crazy for cash. Oh, my God, that was Scott Walker saying that, you know, we now, now, now women, <laughs> did you know that we do this? Because I didn't know that we did this. And I've been a woman a really long time, but now it's news to me. Thank you, Scott Walker. Thank you for telling me just what a disgusting, black-hearted, murderous gender I am a member of. Apparently, not only will we order our OBGYN to dissect and kill the baby on the slab of Satan in the OR, if we just decide in the last possible second after the last push and the baby has not only crowned, but here's your baby, kill it! I demand that you kill it on the altar of Satan, which you call the uh, operating table. Oh, my God. Not only do we do that, but apparently, apparently there's this sneaky bunch of us. Oh, yeah. It's a sneaky bunch of women who <laughs> take the baby home under the guise of wanting to nurture it and take care. And all we end up doing is killing it. Right there on the kitchen table. Oh, my God. It's conservative people acting crazy for cash time. CPAC. Have you, have you been watching or listening to any, anything from it at all? I mean, I don't expect anybody in this audience. I don't expect anybody who's sane to watch it because it's so bizarre. I mean, first of all, they left out the entire Bush administration from their conservative group. It didn't happen. Bush never happened, okay? It's now the party of Trump. OK, and, and Trump has warm feelings toward every dictator. And so do they. And that's that. And that's it. You know, uh, remember when Bush went after, uh, you know, uh, Saddam, a dictator uh, that we have to erase, th erase that from your memory, erase that from your permanent role. Today. That did not happen. Done. It didn't have only Ronald Reagan. But how can how could he be the exemplar? This is a man who tore down walls and here we are building. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Their minds are like mush people like mush. But, uh, okay, so that was Scott Walker commenting on womankind. Okay, we, we literally order the... Now, can I just say this as an aside? There is no doctor on this planet, in this country, who would deliver babies and kill a child because the lady on the table told him to. I mean, that just does not happen. You understand that does not happen, right? I mean, are we clear about that not happening? Just saying, Snopes needs to do a, a, something. Just call it false and say does not happen. No doctor has ever uh, been 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 convicted of or, or or would countenance the murder of a baby. I mean, women don't. I just wow. All right, here's a little more from us because it's Friday. This this whole week has been like cuckoo crazy like off the hook like mind-blowingly bizarro world it was just such a mess i mean you had michael cohen calling the president a racist and a cheat and a con man you know and uh you know for that he was called a liar really <laughs> i see no lie in that okay we had massive gun legislation two gun legislation bills passed two of them passed uh we're still living with a national emergency okay Mueller did not release anything as i told you he would not uh, the House progressives and the blue dog Democrats, who are the corporate, they're fighting. And apparently, uh, Jared, 
in defiance of our intelligence agencies, in defiance of the FBI's recommendation, in defiance of the CIA's recommendation, in defiance of uh, uh, John Kelly, nice time to tell us, John, uh, in defiance of, uh, of Don McGahn, also nice time to tell us, uh, Donald Trump ordered that a security clearance, a top secret one, be issued to Jared, uh, even though uh, the, 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 the reason why Jared was denied a top secret security clearance is because he was compromised with all his debts and he lied on uh, all his uh, forms, right? He didn't disclose meetings that he had with <gasps> Russians. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the sleazy contacts that it was a disqualifying thing. And the weird thing is Donald Trump didn't even break the law when he violated uh, the recommendations of all these people to give Jared. A he has the authority to do so. And he did. And he did. But still, he's going to protect our nation from all enemies, foreign and domestic, even though the reason why Jared could not get a security clearance is because he was stupid, desperate, and broke. He was massively in debt from the 666 fiasco. And our intelligence organizations, our FBI, our White House counsel, our chief of staff to the president of the United States, pretty much thought that this guy uh, would be conducting foreign diplomacy with a sign around his neck that says, we'll do anything for money, including giving the Saudis a hit list of people who would not be loyal to, uh, you know, the new uh, prince who skipped uh, the order of succession in that little dictatorship. Do you know what I mean? Oh, wow. What a week. So we need some comic relief. All right. Here, here, here are some of the CPAC ac activities. Uh, this is what, uh, you know, conservative people acting crazy for cash sound like. They're actually fentanyl heroin. Our kids are having parties and they call them Skittles parties. They do. Where they bring pills and put them into bowls and everybody just kind of picks whatever pill they want and they take them. I mean, it's kind of a shocking thing when I heard about this, just randomly taking pills. And, and some of these children, unbeknownst to them, are taking a Xanax that's actually a contraband Xanax, uh, and they're dying immediately. There is no chance to save their life. They don't make it to the hospital. It was one mistake one time, and their lives are lost. Uh, that is Fox News investigative reporter Sarah Carter. She's an investigator. She wanted to investigate Snopes.com is what she ought to investigate. That does not happen. It happened one time. One time, one father said uh, that his kids did a party where they put random pills. That would be an issue for Big Pharma now, wouldn't it? But of course, now for Fox News, that has something to do with drug cartels. <laughs> I don't know. A candy dish full of uh, pills, and your children are so stupid that they don't even care what they're taking, okay? They just don't even care. They will take any damn thing. They're in so much despair, so much pain, because I guess, I guess they realize Sarah Carter is their parent. Or Lala Ingram is raising them. I don't know how much, how much, I mean, the despair that it must be to say, I don't care if I speed or if I sleep through the show. I don't care if I, you know, vomit on my own shoes or if I'm allergic. I don't, I don't care if it's, uh, you know, I, really. This is just so bizarre, so crazy. I don't know if this will play. I've never seen anything quite like this than when I went to the epicenter in Ohio. Okay, so now we're going to get stories from the heartland. Okay, this is the investigative reporter for Fox News who's going to report that she saw something that never happened. Okay. And other states who are facing this crisis where the morgues were so overflowing with bodies that they had to rent freezer trailers to put the children in the freezer trailers outside of the mortuary. I never saw anything like this. I never saw the way people cried and begged and pleaded for someone to just pay attention. And even those that are working undercover in the DEA, uh, you know, uh, in, in places like Ohio. I mean, Ohio for crying out loud, middle America. <laughs> and they're saying it's being divided up by the drug cartels. <laughs> she insane. Uh, morgues are overflowing everybody they're renting freezer trucks for our children is what's going on that's what's happening 
we, I mean, how how is this a cartel problem in the first place? If, we, you know, obviously we have a problem with pills in this country. There's just no question. And it's all because of Big Pharma. It's all because of Purdue. It's all because of McKeeson. These are the distributors. These are the cartels. But they want to stand up at CPAC and say that the distributors of drugs are, you know, uh, Mexican. I, I don't I don't really understand it. I'm not really clear how we get from Purdue Pharma and McKeeson, who is the distributor. Uh, I mean, we just had a 60 Minutes episode on Sunday. I can't play 60 Minutes. Uh, they, they don't consider that news. News is uh, fair use. You know, things of national importance. Uh, I don't know why 60 Minutes uh, packages themselves that way in their algorithm, but they do. So therefore, I cannot play it for you. But I would suggest that you go watch 60 Minutes On Demand and go look at last Sunday's. Go look at last Sunday's because it was a man who made a absolute fortune distributing drugs, real pharmaceuticals, who realized that Purdue had lobbied the Food and Drug Administration so hard that the Food and Drug Administration agreed to change the insert in oxycodone and said that, see, oxycodone is a hospice drug, just so you know. That is an end-of-life pain management drug. When you know you're dying and you are in pain, oxycodone was invented just for you, for your Soylent Green moment. And they lobbied so hard, the FDA, to make that instead of a temporary end-of-life hospice drug, they lobbied the FDA to say to people, to say to doctors primarily, that you could use it repeatedly for long periods of time. And it wasn't addictive. And that's what happened. And so doctors started prescribing it for everything from dental procedures uh, to, uh, you know, uh, 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 broken fingers. And there at CPAC, she's telling you that didn't happen. She's telling you it's the drug cartels that are, you know, uh, causing your kids to have Skittles parties with pills. No, it's the big pharmaceutical companies that are causing people to be addicted to pills. Human, But, of course, we kill our babies, so what do we care, right? Because we, we take them home and we sacrifice them on the altar of sin. Listen, it's so bizarre what's going on out there. It's just so crazy. These conservative people acting crazy for cash at this, uh, you know. I need a break. I invited our brother from another mother. You know, Trey Crowder, the liberal redneck. He's on tour. He's in my town. When I knew he'd be in our town, I invited him to come and visit with us, and he will join us next. Things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Ah, yes. Walls. One of mankind's greatest achievements. <laughs> yes, it's the first time that Ugg walked up to the rest of his drooling half naked peers and said, Hey, what if we made cave out of not cave? <laughs> God damn it, Ugg, how do you do it? And then they built man's first ever wall out of mammoth shit or whatever, and the rest is literally history. Who doesn't like a good wall? And I want to know you smart asses commenting about Princess Di or Dale Earnhardt or nothing. We all know, okay, but there's, there's exceptions to every rule. But for the most part, people like walls. But not all walls are created equal. Some walls are stupid and unnecessary and the favored machinations of a shrunken, diseased mind. And of course, the world's foremost shrunken disease mind, our president, has got his blackened <laughs> heart set on a wall of his own. Yes, Trump wants his wall and he's willing to tear this country apart to get it. But why? Why does he want it so bad? And some people might say, well, he's just trying to fulfill a campaign promise. That's important for presidents to do. Sure, but this ain't even what he promised. What he promised was that Mexico would pay for the wall, and now he's asking for taxpayer dollars to do it, which to me is sort of like if I promised my kids that their uncle was going to give them a PlayStation for Christmas, and then when they woke up that morning, I just handed them an invoice for nothing and slapped them in the face. (laughs) Oh, everybody, it's our favorite liberal redneck on a Trey Trey Friday, because it's been a Trey Trey week. Trey Crowder. Hi, Trey. (laughs) 
<laughs> Hello. How's it going, Randy? It's good. Welcome to Florida. <laughs> yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, I could see on your Twitter feed you're really thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I like to, you know, make fun of Florida, but it, uh, it comes from a place of love, ultimately. Florida going uh, to do Florida. That's just the way it right, is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now That's you're one in the. thing I appreciate about Florida, actually, is, <laughs> is relentless dedication to being Florida. You know? <laughs> I know. I'm so glad you're here. I really am. I need the comedy relief. I'm coming to your show tomorrow. And, uh, uh, you know, for people who don't know, Trey's on tour. He's been on tour in this, for some apparent reason. You stay to the southeast a lot. I don't know exactly why. I guess you're looking for audiences with the same love for fine lit that you have, uh, blacks, gays, and Jews also. Um, (laughs) But you've been so busy, man. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you. I remember when it was just a daily news uh, sort of a column, and you didn't even understand why you were doing it. And now you you got the Well Read, which is R E D, the Well Read Comedy Tour going on, and he's going to be in a city near you if you are anywhere in the uh, southeast or, or even in Portland, Oregon. He's back. He's out in Oxnard, where my dad uh, my dad used to live. <laughs> he's all over the place, and you can get your tickets there. But you got the show uh, on Comedy Central. I was able to see some clips from it. It's hysterical sketch comedy and it's just i saw the one about you know jews <laughs> and as one i have to say it's hysterical it's really freaking funny so uh well, well yeah i mean when does that start well that so you know there those sketches are uh comedy central digital sketches you know that we filmed uh i don't know back in the fall sometime and it you know it takes forever to yeah. finish things so they're just now coming out and we'll go from there and see what else we do with them going forward but yeah i, I you know they came to one of my shows in uh la at largo comedy central people and then it sort of you know the ball got rolling from there but yeah it's been uh it's been a wild ride for sure over the last almost three years yeah so i first had one of the videos go viral it's been it- pretty crazy it is. It, it was crazy. And I was I was like uh, I was one of the first people to see it. And I didn't I, I honestly don't know you. That's the crazy part. You know, like my friends who bought me the tickets to go see you. <laughs> right. <laughs> they said, well, you know him. Uh, you could get some uh, VIP. Tra- and, I, and I actually wrote to you because I've never met you. And I said, well, who do I have to blow to get backstage? You know, because I'll do uh-huh. it. I'll do it is what I will. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, that's saying something because I am a Jew. Uh, so but, <laughs> but I really don't know you. And I was trying to explain that to them. I said, I, I really don't know him. You know, I just uh, we've talked. <laughs> so, well, yeah. But, you know, you're always welcome to, you know, come hang out anytime you want to. Well, I'm going to holler at you. Yeah. So, okay, well, please do. I will. So what do you make of, of this? This I'm sure you've been seeing uh, all the stuff I see because, you know, your comedy is politically based. And, I mean, you couldn't get a better president for comedy. This guy is just, uh, he's he's cray-cray. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I mean, what do you think of, of, of uh, you know, Ivanka and uh, people don't want to get stuff? And now the oversight committee wants to talk to her. They want Jared gets a clearance, and, uh, even though they said... You know, he's pretty much going to do diplomacy with a sign around his neck that says, you know, I, I will do anything for money. So he really shouldn't have one. And he gets one anyway. I, I mean, what what what's the damage you think? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't even know where you begin to quantify what the damage is yeah. going to be ultimately from all this. Yeah. It's probably going to be years of fallout. Who knows? But that's the thing, like, even if you're just describing it just now, like, you can't even. You know, you listed like at least like three, you know, <laughs> ridiculous things in the span of maybe ninety seconds or whatever, because it's, that's how it goes. You can't even keep up with uh, all the uh, silly bull crap that they're, you know, that comes out every single day. It almost feels like it's a strategy on their part sometimes, like to just overwhelm us with it absurdity does. or something it to does. make it impossible to, you know, really zero in on any one given awful thing that they do you know but I, that, that that's giving them too much credit i don't think it really is you know that this is just how they are yeah but it has that effect though it does just, it's overwhelming right very absolutely it's completely overwhelming well this this testimony from michael Cohen, it, it sucked all the air out of the room for a few days and you know what as it should because it was really off the hook i mean this was amazing his opening was he's a racist he's a comment and he's a cheat that was the opening I mean, yeah, yeah, right. And then, he and went then, from there. 
Right. And then to counter it, we had uh, the freedom cracker himself, Mark Meadows, trot out a black woman who was told to stand there, not speak, stand behind right. me and be a prop to prove I'm not a racist. I, Trey, I can't even, I, I can't even figure it out. You know, like what well, was, what was that's that? Been, well, that, I mean, that's like, that's like page one of their playbook when it comes to, you know, racism or whatever, to, you know, find the black person. <laughs> And point to him and be like, no, see, right there's one. I'm not racist. But are we like, still playing the I have a black friend card? I, I mean, mean, well, they are. <laughs> They're still playing all the old cards. They haven't got a new deck of cards in 40 years. You know what I mean? Like, there's every, that's their whole M.O. And they haven't, you know, changed the way they go about things in forever. And the I have a black friend card is uh, just a part of that for them. But, yeah, those... Those, uh, but here's theory. the weird part. Here's the really strange part. So he trots out Lynn Patton, and, uh, you know, obviously uh, she was told not to say anything. Just stand there and be a prop for me. And then when several, several Congress members say, uh, that was a racist act, dude. I mean, really, what's our... he loses his mind, and yeah. we end up soothing him. Mm -hmm. Well, did... he was hysterical. He was. You know? <laughs> he was uh, in hysterics. Uh <laughs> I don't know that he's, you know, fit to serve or if he's going to be that emotional and sensitive about things. But, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, he was in hysterics and he needed soothing. So, you know, somebody had to do it. But, yeah, I, I agree completely. I mean, he was crying almost yeah. in, in offense at people getting offended by him uh, parading a black person out, like you said, <laughs> to stand there and not talk. Uh, to prove that I, Donald Trump isn't a racist, when, like half of his whole thing has been, you know, racism since he started. You, well, of course, because he was uh, he was one of the original freedom crackers. He was down at those tea parties saying that Obama needed to go back to Kenya. It, right. You know, you've got a president who based every bit of political. Uh, what do you, I wouldn't even call it, you know, uh, cred. Because, I mean, he has no credibility, but he, he started this whole thing by being uh, a birther. And, you know, this Meadows guy jumped on that birther bandwagon big time bad. North Carolina, you know, you can't vote anymore. You, uh, you know, somebody collects your vote and they vote for you. It's a service, apparently, from right. yeah, North Carolina State, uh, you know, uh, Secretary of State. But, I mean, honestly, this man, to, to sit there and protest, and I just found it so bizarre because yesterday I got a phone call from a guy out there who falls for this stuff all the time, you know, who tells me um, that he loves everybody. He has no, uh, not a racist bone in his body, but he loves President Trump, and so does that make him a racist? And, you know, I, why do people call concern? And I just said, listen, the thing is you're vouching for a racist, and that's what Mark Meadows did. He did a racist right. act so he could vouch for another racist. It was very bizarre. Well, I genuinely believe, as far as all that goes, that, you know, they can be as upset by it as they want, but as far as I can tell, not every conservative or not every Trump person is a racist necessarily, but every racist is a Trump fan, but, you know, <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. Like, that I've ever met. Like, he is the official, you know, president of racist whether the rest of them like that or not it doesn't make it any less true you know what i mean and so i mean that that's not up to us to you know soothe reconcile them. And yes. make right yeah exactly well, I thought that's the no, thing that's is i always from. find myself trying to soothe them trying to you know get them to be unhysterical about uh, me you know what i mean or you yeah. or you i i just uh, it's not my job is is what i'm saying you know uh, but this Michael Cohn thing, I mean, you would think that Michael Cohn would want to spend more time at home before he goes to uh, prison. But then you realize he lives in Trump Tower. So you, you kind of get why he wants to stay out in front of Congress. I mean, th you know, these people that he named, he really name checked everybody. This is this is really unbelievable. And my big question is or was yesterday for sure. How could Mueller? You know, I mean, they're saying, oh, the Mueller report, we have to wait for the Mueller report. We can't impeach him without the Mueller report. How can Mueller let this man be president for one more second? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I feel like at the end of the day, it, it comes down to the Republicans in the Senate and the, you know, Congress or whatever that will ultimately have to 
come around and do something about it, even when the Mueller report comes out. And I, I mean, I really hope that happens. But I've been waiting on you know something to actually happen we as all a result are. of one of these various reports yeah. for months. Right? Yeah, we've all been waiting. And like, I'm not saying that I've just completely lost faith, but I mean, at this point, it, you know, I'll believe it when I see it, kind of thing. I know. Uh, even the- when the report comes out, because they just, I mean, out of all the things we already know and they've already happened that they've just shrugged off i just can't imagine what could even be in there that they wouldn't find some way to try to spin and deflect and you know the way they've done with everything else so but we'll see oh i know i i, I just uh, you know after listening to cone really truly and and you know you take him with a grain of salt because the guy is obviously you know a, a, a thug he's obviously somebody who threatens people he's obviously somebody who name checked this guy maddie calamari i mean you know uh, the, uh, what a name you know the, the squid I, I guess they call him the squid you know he's <laughs> he's like the luca brazzi of the trump organization and he's now the chief operating officer stormy daniels told this story about how she was going to work out and her two-year-old was in the back seat of a car and some guy some you know a uh, guy came and said a beautiful baby be terrible if something happened to her mother now we find out michael Cohn testifies no he doesn't even have to hire people they're already inside the trump order and they're like well who was he threatened 200 people no more 300 people no more 500 yeah right 500 that well who are these guys maddie calamari now all of a sudden we we start looking for maddie calamari everyone on the internet was looking for maddie calamari and you find him and he's like uh, Luca Brazzi standing there, and he might as well have just said, you know, Don Corleone. It's, it's it, you know, on the day of your wedding of your daughter. I hope the first child is a masculine one. Did you see that clip of him on uh, Celebrity Apprentice? He couldn't put a sentence together. This guy, <laughs> and he's the chief operating officer of Trump Organization. Yeah, and his name, you know, yeah, is Calamari. Like it doesn't. <laughs> there's so much about all this that just doesn't even seem real like it's crazy (laughs) that this is all actually real yeah because it's so it's so insane that it's easy sometimes to like feel like you know like it's all a dream or a show or something i don't know but it's (laughs) all real well you know wrote any of this into a movie they wouldn't let you film it because they'd be like this is all ridiculous like maddie calamari are you serious you can't do any better than that (laughs) unless ben stiller wrote it you know what i mean nobody would yeah i mean it's just so bizarre but what did america think when we said hey the house always wins except in trump casinos he's bankrupted everything he's touched six times he's been sued for fraudulent universities on top of it uh he's a reality tv star let's choose him what could go wrong I mean, what did we think? Yeah, but he was shaking things up, Randy. You know? <laughs> yeah, he shook up my my whole shaking life. Shaking things up. I was on the, the side. I was I was happily in retirement. I was on the side, and just when I saw it, I said, "Oh my God, I got to do something." And I rebuilt this little studio because, Jesus Christ, man! It, and now we're living in a national emergency, and nobody seems to even know it. <laughs> right. Well, again, because like, how many things have happened since? He declared right. the national emergency. I, I mean, I literally don't even know. Now, I mean, circling back around to, you know, the prop woman, Lynn Patton, uh, do you think perhaps this wall thing has to do with racism? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I don't know where you get that idea. <laughs> I don't know. What would, ever, what would ever make you think that? I don't uh, know. Maybe we ought to no, send him a screener of Green about Book. security. You know, that's all it is. The yes, because... of this nation. I it know. doesn't matter about the the color of the children as long as they're in cages Um, (laughs) yeah yeah, no of course it's racism i I mean there's almost no other explanation for it you know uh but hey i I just i I, I mean it's just so crazy we are literally in a national emergency because the president of the united states who like you point his promises are really worth something you know he must he must fulfill this one uh, only because it's a great performer. It gets the racist going. Uh, God built, and we're in a national emergency because he promised racist things to racist people who are all ginned up to see the race war. I, right. It, it just blows my mind. It just it, it, well, another another thing about the wall and all that that uh, I don't think a lot of people realize or think about, but I. Like I used to, when I was started in comedy, I worked for the federal government. I worked for the U.S. Department of Energy, and that's back when it was ran by a uh, Nobel laureate physicist from Stanford instead of a you know 
dancing Texas now monkey. That- yeah, you know, uh, you know, Rick Perry. So luckily, I never had to work for him, but I work for the federal government, and so I know how the federal government goes about things and projects and accomplishing things. And I, I would bet everything I have, everything I ever will have, that po- politics aside, that wall will never get built. If, if they say it's going to cost twenty billion dollars, they'll spend seventy-five billion and eighteen years on maybe half of it before somebody scraps it. And then the rest of it just stands there, you know. For, you know, you know what I saw until it yesterday. All falls into the ground. I, I'm telling you, I believe that. But there, yesterday, I found a video. We played it for the. I think it was on ABC News. You could Google it. it they were destroying the prototypes, <laughs> all of them. Yeah. They were just knocking them all down, saying there was no value to any of them, and that the 14 miles that they intend to build uh, are going to be mirror images of the ones we already have. So, right. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's a very uh, sick thing, but we, you know, we're not done. And when it, the the thing that really creeped me out of all the things Michael Cohen said, right? The thing that creeped me out the most was the thing that you know, conspiracy callers that call me up. And and I, even if they're on our side, I don't let them get away with like really crazy outlandish crap because I want us to be credible, right? And so when they call me up and they say things like there will be no peaceful transfer of power if Trump loses, I tell them, oh, come on, you know, go on Reddit and and post there. This is getting nuts. Yeah. And right. then Michael Cohn says it under oath that if Donald yeah. Trump loses, there will be no peaceful transition to power. And the media yeah. doesn't even really, uh, you know, they don't even uh, pick it up. <laughs> that, and that, to me, was the most unbelievable thing he said in all those hours. Well, I, I mean, I might this may end up aging terribly and I might be hopelessly naive. I don't know. But, yeah, <laughs> I haven't been worried about that at all. The main reason that I'm not worried about that is because I don't think they have the competency necessary to pull that off. Like, you know, to pull off what it amounts to, like, a coup or whatever the hell that would be. Like, what What makes anybody think they could actually accomplish that? You know what I mean? Well, like, the reason— Holding the... off, like, a, a, a revolution, essentially. Like, they don't, they don't do nothing. Even things they all agree that they want to happen. They can't get done. Like they, I don't know. I'm not. I'm just. I'm not worried about them. Uh, just you know, taking this country over by force or whatever. Personally, again, I may end up eating those words. I really hope not. <laughs> I know. But I'm not worried about about that. I mean, me neither. Personally. You know, it's so funny because I come from that same you know uh, practical school of thought. I'm a pragmatist, you know, and I always say, uh, right. and, and I'll t- I've been telling people for years, oh, well, he's too lazy, he doesn't work much, he won't put very much effort into it, you know, he's uh, not the brightest guy, and the people around him tend to be the D-listers, we're down to like, you know, the double D list yeah. now, you know, and uh, so I just don't see them having, you know, the ability to do, but then people start pointing out, you know, hey, it's, co- you know, look at this, and look at that, and I, and I go, okay, maybe we'd have to, you know, like, keep that on the side in our mind some i don't know i feel ridiculous saying it out loud but michael cohen said it out loud and the woman yeah. the woman sitting behind him she was like gasping for air she was like what <laughs> wow yeah, she had a, that lady had a lot of great uh like reactions she did all right listen i'm gonna let you go because uh, you must experience my state and it's full you know and realize why it's shaped the way it is there is a reason and i'm sure yeah. i'm yeah. sure you already know so i've heard yes i'm excited to come see you tomorrow i will urge everybody who is in tampa tonight tickets are uh, you know, available Fort Lauderdale tomorrow. Then he flies back out to L.A., uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Knoxville, Sacramento, Portland, Oxnard, Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow, it's gorgeous there, though. Jackson, uh-huh. back to Jacksonville, Orlando. Then the big one, May thirtieth, New York, New York, and then Asheville, North Carolina, just to decompress, I guess. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we're all over the place. So, you are. Yeah, come you are. See you. Well, listen, if I don't get to see you tomorrow, I just want to let you know I'm super proud of you. I think No, come holler at me, for real. I'll I'll try. I'll try. Come back here. Okay. The thing you need to know, I'm pretty shy, actually. I mean. All right. All right. No, I don't believe it. No, I know. Nobody does, but it's true. (laughs) It's true. All right. Well, listen, I I am so happy that you joined us just for a little comic relief because it's just like I called the show today, Trey Trey. (laughs) Because it's great, great. It is. About to give me the vipers. It is. I love you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye, Trey. Bye. All right. Love him. I just do.
This man went from like nowhere. I mean, he was he was literally he was literally living in uh, the deep south. He was uh, from Tennessee. <laughs> and he honestly put some videos up, went viral. He uh, he's just got this real snarky, you know, sense of. Uh, what's real and what's not and it's difficult because you know like i said he grew up in the deep rural south with you know a true love and appreciation for all things jewish all things gay (laughs) all kinds of you know deep deep literature and philosophy (laughs) you know just surrounding his his every uh, cell and uh, somehow he managed to speak the truth in a really great way. And I, I just, we need more people like him. So go get your tickets. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561 270 3844. 561 270 3844. All right, it is the first of the month. So please, please, I am begging you, uh, as if I am out of warm beer, I am begging you, dear leaders, to please uh, support the show. It's uh, the first of the month. I've already written the checks. I did it just like I told you I would. There's a little desk over there. And I sit there and I write them. (laughs) And they were, it was draining. I have to tell you, I'm drained. So please, if you appreciate what we do and you appreciate the show, support it any way you like. There are T-shirts, there are long sleeves, there are short sleeves, there are podcasts. Please buy a Sting a Podcast. Uh, and then there's the donations. Uh, those are wonderful. Uh, so just go to randyroads.com and uh, support the show any way that you would like to. Uh, and we would love, love that, especially now. Um, you know I'm up to something. I'm building something. And we just got the gear. Uh, still sitting in the boxes. Uh, Roy, you know, uh, our lovely uh, engineer who, uh, you know, is just the best. Roy! Uh, he costs big money. Big, big, huge, huge money. And uh, so he's going to install all this stuff. And it will improve the way all this looks. It will improve because there are certain people that do not like the curtains behind me. Now, I could open those curtains. I could. And you would just see, you know, a blue sky and some trees because I'm sitting there backed up to a parking lot in a commerce center. (laughs) That's where we are. Uh, And I had to pay the rent on this place. Uh, But uh, they really hate that. And so I have to build something that looks different. And I have to build something that's going to take more than one shot, okay, of me. They're very specific. I mean, really specific. And uh, I saw a contract yesterday. Now, I haven't signed a contract in forever because I work for you. And, you know, you and me, we get along fine. We do it on a handshake. Do you know what I'm saying? That's why I like to do things. They sent me a contract. It's 28 freaking pages. I read, like, the first four pages, and I shook in my shoes because every time I sign a contract something horrible happens. And it's because they won't write it in English, okay? And so half the time you, you, you kind of know what you're doing, but you, and then they go, oh, didn't you see this word in perpetuity? You know what that word means? The day after you die, the contract is still in force. The day after you die, they still own everything. All right, so this contract didn't have in perpetuity in it, but I still can't sign it because this one said, Broadcast throughout the universe. <laughs> and I actually had a conversation, and you'll know with who, but I actually had a conversation that said, broadcast throughout the universe. No, 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 no. It can't be the universe, okay? It can't be, because I have my little corners of the universe that I use to help us pay bills. And you can't have that corner of the universe because I've already plowed and seeded and planted and watered and weeded and harvested that particular corner of the universe. That is my corner of the universe. What do you mean we can't have the whole universe? No, 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 no. We don't sign things that say the entire universe any longer. So now I'm kind of stuck with all these freaking boxes of very expensive stuff. If you want to look it up and see what I'm talking about, it's called a TriCaster. This little piece of doohickey is like uh, $23,000 over here. And we freaking wrote the check. And then 
It doesn't come with the control panel. Oh, you want to control your $23,000 piece of equipment? You're going to pay for the control panel. And then, you want to know the sickest part of it? Yeah, the customer service piece of it. All right, so you got this new piece of $23,000 worth of equipment. Then you got to buy the control panel if you want to control your $23,000 piece of equipment. And then, on top of it, you got to buy the camera that works with its protocol. Okay, so that's extra. And then if you want customer service, swear to God, if I'm lying, you could, you could, you could, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I swear on my eyes. Well, not mine, because I have this myobian gland disorder that's been going on for months and I can't, I can't see anymore. It's very sad. I'm going uh, bleed. It's just, you know, ever so slow, like, like auroras around every light, do you know, because it's just full of gunk and mung. Hey, if there are any ophthalmologists out there, I've tried everything. It ain't clearing up, but okay, that's sad. So now you want customer service to help you. God forbid the camera doesn't work and the protocol is it's not speaking. You know what that costs a year? $3,000 a year to talk to a human. To talk to a person. You remember when the free market was going to save us all? Holy crap, man. That you could actually have a niche in broadcasting where you could sell stuff like this and charge people to talk to a human being to use it properly. So that's where we're at. Just thought I'd let you know. Because I've been keeping this all, you know, stuffed down deep, deep, deep inside for, you know, quite some months now. And then all of a sudden I'm uh, confronted with in the whole universe. And I'm like, uh, I just came out of pocket, you know, like uh, $30,000. And uh, quite frankly, I have a debt-free business and we don't pay ourselves very much. And Brett and Scott are my staff and they got other jobs. And I'm working around the clock and trying to sell T-shirts and fulfill orders and make sure people get what they want and gift cards don't work the way that they were. I got to fix the back end there. I got to do this. Plus, I got bookkeeping over here and then taxes over there. And, uh, but yeah, we should grow the show. All right, so let's grow the show. And then they say, yeah, yeah, we want to do exactly what you want to do. We are all like-minded here, except we're going to own you throughout the universe. No, no, you're not. <laughs> so... I have to say, it's like, this is so bad. And this is why, honestly, I don't want to work for anybody. But apparently, if you want to grow and be on other platforms, you have to come to an agreement, which is fine, but write it in freaking English. So I don't have to, you know, sit there and look at, uh, you know, hey, let's kill my business so I can grow yours which is what this thing was. I don't know. It's it's difficult. Let's just put it that way. Uh, Greer in California. Hey, Randy. Hey, Greer. You? I, I'm crazy right now. I'm uh, beside well. myself. <laughs> I got a lot. We'll join the club. Oh, there's so many moving parts to everything, you know, and uh, just I thought we would give ourselves a break from the, hey, the sky is falling today, you know, just talk about things, get it all off our chest. Well, get it all off your chest. I did get one of my girlfriends to get a, a podcast a couple of weeks ago. So, and did that work? one at a time? Did that work for well, you? I made her listen to me. I bought other ones for other friends, but I made her listen every day for like a week. And then she, I think she got addicted, so she bought a. I don't know if she bought a full one or like a month, but whatever. Yeah, you the, get more money if she gets about a month. Uh, yeah, well, in the end, yeah. But uh, right, in, now, in the end. right now I could use an infusion. You know what I'm saying? So if people wanted to go spend the whole amount for the year, that would help right now. Well, maybe I'll have to do that for Thank her you. Again. I appreciate you so very much. Just cause, <laughs> cause we, because we love you and we cannot do this without you and people I'm trying like to you, grow so. it. I'm trying to put it in your house everywhere I can is what I'm doing, you know. And uh, But everybody uh, has uh, all these, uh, you know, their rules, their rules, people. <laughs> and I think that's the hardest part. It is. Because I have, you the know, business. it's like getting it. Is it on Facebook? I have the, the membership and then it comes up. Sometimes it's not there. It's not downloaded. But, you know, and it's like, whatever. I'll, I'll just figure it out as I go. Oh, but you mean I on, don't miss a day on my end. It shouldn't be that on your end. I mean, well, I mean, you're on you're on Facebook and you're on YouTube and you're on Twitter. You're on whatever. Plus, you're on 
you know, I listen. I actually because you I know because where I people own the podcast. I just listen th- later in the day. But you know, we're on randyroads dot com, and that's mine. And if anybody's having any issues with any of these outside people, then just go to randyroads dot com. That I know. Uh, you know, is always going to be there for you because that's me. That's my. But I do. I listen to randyroads.com. Yeah. But I don't listen live because I got to work because I'm in California. Well, the podcast. Because well, I got to work. The podcast ought to be there for you about, <laughs> what, 20 minutes yeah. after the show every day without fail. They should be there. Yeah. Every once in a while, I get some little glitchy kind of a thing, but I'm okay. I Eventually, it catches up with me. I get it. I don't miss you. So. That's my advice. All right. To everybody. All right. I'm my question is just really about the timing of Trump of Russia, Cambridge Analytica and all of that and I just continue to be a little confused about just if Ted Cruz is with Cambridge Analyza, Analytica and Kellyanne and Steve Bannon and that crew, and Trump was already, you know, in cahoots with Russia as far back as, you know, April, May, June. But And he didn't get with Kellyanne and all of that crew until August. There just seems to be something missing in that connection well that's why they need to talk to jared who was in charge of all of this uh you know digital uh and they need to talk to him in open session they need to talk to him you know uh, and bannon i mean where is bannon you know this whole thing he was running breitbart he was on sirius xm they had their own channel uh you know this chris wiley dude uh laid out his timeline for you know when all this happened with uh you know uh transferring all of the psychological stuff that they sucked off of facebook to the trumpers you know to the trump exactly camp. so right. was trump using what were they going to do without cambridge analytica just with the emails that were hacked and the cambridge analytica were they in cahoots with russia as well to get to the Regardless of who was the candidate, so that whoever got it so I, to connect the emails. Right. So that's why we need the testimony. We need, we need, you know, it's like people didn't understand how Stormy Daniels was paid until Michael Cohn testified. And then it was very simple. But they make it all muddy. They make it all crazy so that you, you think it's some crazy, you know, thing. And it's not. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Last month, we here at NBC News reported that security officials had rejected Jared Kushner's security clearance, but were overruled. Well, the New York Times is now reporting, citing four people briefed on the matter, that they were overruled by the president, who ordered his chief of staff to have his son-in-law's clearance granted here. What's interesting is that apparently both John Kelly, the then chief of staff, oh and Don God. McGahn, the then White House counsel, he basically wrote that they supported the decision not to give him this top security clearance. Yeah. Sahil, this feels like a story of... I think we always knew the president has the power to grant security clearance to anybody. We assumed that eventually, if Jared couldn't get his security clearance, that the president was going to give it to him. Now we have the receipts. Yeah, I think the president just made the decision without thinking about the institutional processes that people typically go through. He doesn't think like that. He doesn't generally look at those and, and view those as an obstacle when he has the power to do something. But it sounds like whoever leaked this may be speaking to the history books here making clear who was responsible and who was That's wasn't. what it feels like here. It's like Don McGahn, John Kelly, two people not there anymore, you know, who throughout this whole time, I mean, Don McGahn clearly never was comfortable with the mixing of the personal and the professional in the White House Counsel's Office. He is always trying to create a professional White House Counsel's Office. So I will say, having worked in the White House for a very long time under two different presidents, that if that happened... Mm -hmm. Uh, in the White Houses that I worked in, I can't imagine the chief of staff or the White House counsel not resigning. If the intelligence agencies are not giving your son, your son-in-law, uh, security clearance, there's a reason, and they know what that reason is. So, the fact that Trump overruled them and gave it to him, and they did nothing, 
I think that's a that's a big problem. They might be trying to covering to cover their butts now. How in the world did we get these D-listers in the White House? Now, I remember early on talking to Richard Painter. Now, you know Richard Painter. Uh, we love him. He sounds like Foghorn Leghorn, okay? But he's an ethics guy. He's super smart. He worked in the Bush, which is hysterical. The Bush W's ethics department. That Bush had ethics. I mean, it's just, it's, it's very funny. But at least, at least he's speaking out now. And, uh, you know, Richard Painter was uh, saying, well, Donald McGahn, I think he's a real guy. And, you know, he's trying to, oh, bull crap. See, and I said, no, I got questions about this dude. And now you know why, okay? All this stuff was going on in the White House. All this craziness with the, from the Comey firing, Don McGahn knew. Uh, the meetings with the Russians, okay, in, in the Oval Office with nobody there, Don McGahn knew. Kelly, with his racist comments about Frederica Wilson, I'm supposed to treat him as a real guy? Uh, no, there's not a chance, okay? Not a chance. He called her an empty barrel. He called her a liar. And, of course, it was shown on videotape that John Kelly was the racist liar. So, no, for me, they were never real people. They were like B-listers, C-listers. Now we're down to the double D-list, okay? I mean, you can't find anybody to work for Donald Trump. But back to those two. So they're in the White House, and the CIA and the FBI, and that's what's in the, the New York Times, they both decline to recommend security clearances for Jared because he's an idiot, he's broke, he's desperate, and he's taken meetings with Saudis, he's taken meetings with the UAE, trying to open up a back channel to Russia. And doesn't disclose any of this on his security clearance forms. He has to amend his security clearance forms like a hundred times. A hundred times. He's lying, right? And so they say, you know, he's got these ties to foreign governments. He's got ties to foreign investors. He's got unreported contacts with weird bankers who are uh, bankers under sanctions, U.S. sanctions over in Russia. He's got relationships with Kazakh banks that are, you know, uh, they're, they're not on the up and up, you know, and, and he might as well just do diplomacy with a sign around his neck saying, I will work for cash for you. I will do any damn thing. I will work for cash. I need cash. I'm broke. I'm in debt. I'm, I, I'm vulnerable, uh, you know, to the banks and I need money. And that's why they said no to him. And the other factors we don't even know yet. We don't even know. But I'll tell you, this all was going on back in May of 2018. This was after Rob Porter. Remember Rob Porter? Anybody remember him? The guy that beat his wives? Uh, yeah, that John Kelly vouched for? He had a security clearance because he, he had to touch every piece of paper that the president saw. That was his job. Uh, it was like they called him some kind of a, a secretary. But, uh, you know, that was his job was to give all these, uh, you know, uh, a top secret documents and briefs and everything to the press. So he needed to clear. And this guy was a known wife beater. And he got a security clearance. Then when they were reviewing security clearances, they said, oh, I don't know, Kushner, you know, he shouldn't be given a, a so let's give him an interim. Let's give him a, you know, a, a in the meanwhile, sort of a secret, not a top secret. Let's not clear him because, you know, we don't like, uh, you know, his business ties. We don't like the, the fact that he's broke. We don't like, and the CIA has recommended he's a no. That was May of 2018. And McGahn in the White House Counsel's Office, he recommended to Donald Trump that Kushner not be given a security clearance. But the next day, after McGahn tells him, oh, this guy shouldn't have one, <coughs> Trump orders John Kelly to give Kushner a top secret security clearance anyway, and they don't resign then? That's what I'm saying. It was like a, just, you know, shooting the crap with Trey. But honestly, what damage could be, you know, what what, what kind of damage are, are, are top secrets like stocks neck viruses and how we do cyber intrusions and, <coughs> you know, sources and methods, the names of people on the ground in far flung places like, oh, I don't know, Saudi Arabia. And then we find out subsequently that Jared Kushner did this unannounced trip to Saudi. 
And while he's there, he's meeting with this prince who is, uh, you know, going to bypass the order of succession in this, uh, you know, autocratic dictatorship that is Saudi Arabia. And uh, there are people inside Saudi Arabia's royal family that don't like this Jamal guy, that uh, that don't like uh, uh, this Salman guy, Prince uh, Salman. And they think that, you know, he's a corrupt individual, he's a killer, he's a torturer, he's a human rights abuser, and they don't really have an interest in seeing him. So Jared goes over to Saudi and gives them the top secret information that he's now in receipt of to tell uh, uh, Salman, Prince Salman, this 32-year-old punk-ass prince, who's going to plot against him in the effort for him to become the king. And subsequently, all these people on our list end up in a Ritz-Carlton hotel being uh, threatened. One guy is killed, to make an example. All the rich guys in Saudi Arabia that were on this list, they're all taken into the Ritz-Carlton hotel. This is how they torture rich people in Saudi. They bring you into a Ritz, and they threaten you within an inch of your life, and they say, if you don't give us the money from your businesses, you won't be able to do business in our dictatorship anymore. Just like, it's just like Putin. This is right from the dictator's handbook, okay? This is their play, what they do. They go, they find the richest guy. For instance, Putin found this guy, Kordakovsky. He was one of the richest oligarchs in Russia. And when Putin was trying to shake them down for the VIG, saying that they had to pay him in order to be protected, for them to continue to do their business, they needed to give Putin 50% of the proceeds, of all their proceeds, all their profits. And they were like laughing, giggling like schoolgirls, until Putin took Kordakovsky, put him in jail, put him in a cage, and invited what they call their media to come and show all the other oligarchs, your money ain't gonna protect you. I can get anybody, I can reach out and get anybody I want with the support I have from my police, with the support I have from my courts, with the support I have from our Duma, with support that I have. I built this. You're in my house now. And if you don't kick back in that mafioso way, the VIG, you're going to end up in a cage like Kordakovsky. Well, they all started paying. They all started paying. Same damn thing happened in Saudi. They killed one guy and uh, tortured him and killed him, to make an example, in front of all the others, all the other rich guys, all the other oligarchs in Saudi. That shut him up. And how did they know who these guys were? Jared told them. Because we have intelligence operators who tell us that information, and Jared passed it on. He went to Saudi Arabia in a secret trip, unannounced, And he was the special envoy to the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. And right after he left Saudi, this is when the crown prince does his purge. This is just like the uh, Saddam purge that, you you know, Saddam Hussein had the balls to videotape his. And so there's some grainy old 80s tape of, of, of Saddam Hussein telling everybody, I know who the traitors in this uh, group are, and calling them out one by one by name, taking them outside, and killing them all from this, uh, you know, uh, meeting that he had. So there's that. But this is what uh, this is what what Jared got his, uh, his 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 soily hands into. It's very sick. It's very twisted. It's really ugly. And so, how do we sit there and say, "Oh, Kelly and McGann get to play CYA"? Are you kidding me? They don't get to cover their ass. They literally stood by silently while this information was given to the president's son-in-law, married to his daughter, who also has this information about China and Saudi and Russia and every other autocratic place and, 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 and Bangladesh and all the places where she was. I mean, this is insanity. So what's the damage? What could it possibly be to give protected secrets that people literally risk their lives to gather for the protection of the... And so I'm sitting there listening to all this, saying, where the hell is the impeachment? Where are the docs? So I will tell you, 
that uh, you know Elijah Cummings uh, on oversight. I mean, this this belongs in every single committee. This is something for the Intel Committee. This is for the Foreign Relations Committee. This is for the Government Oversight Committee. This is for the Judiciary Committee. This is something every committee they're going to have to have a committee to organize the committees so the committees don't step on each other's committee. That's how crazy this is. This affects every single part of our ability to protect ourselves. I mean, everything, foreign relations, uh, you know, oversight, uh, every single thing, okay? Every single thing. So Elijah Cummings just wrote a letter after this New York Times article hit the uh, press Thursday uh, last night and asked, he said, uh, if true, these new reports raise grave concerns about what derogatory information career officials obtained about Mr. Kushner to recommend denying him access to our nation's most sensitive secrets and why Donald Trump, President Trump, concealed his role in overruling that recommendation and why General Kelly and Don McGahn both felt compelled to document because what's in this New York Times report is that they were contemporaneously documenting this that they were writing themselves just like Comey did. They were writing in real time what was going on because they felt it was so dangerous. But they continue to serve and work for this man? Oh, damn. Oh, God. Randy Rhodes Show is live on RandyRhodes.com and the free Progressive Voices app for Android and iOS. Visit the App Store or ProgressiveVoices.com now. There are a lot of investigations going on, as you know. Democrats um, launching new ones this week. Uh, one of them into the clearance process, um, something that you and your husband now have, mm -hmm. security clearances, but um, there were some issues early on. And I, there are a lot of people that question whether you were given special treatment by the president, overriding other Absolutely. officials. Can you speak to that? There were anonymous leaks about there being issues, but the president had no involvement pertaining to my clearance or my husband's clearance. Zero. What, what were the problems early on? There weren't any other than a backlog that exists of close to a million clearances across government. Oh this isn't my new. God. This was happening under the Obama administration, the Clinton administration. There are literally close to a million people in the federal government who are in the pipeline to get their permanent clearance and are on temporary status. So no special treatment? No. No. No, the president. That's daddy. Uh, this is uh, the full scope of the intelligence officials' concerns about Mr. Kushner is not known, but the clearance had been held up in part over questions from the FBI and the CIA about his foreign and business contacts, including those related to the United Arab Emirates and Russia and Israel, according to multiple people familiar with the events. John Kelly is documenting it. Don McGahn is documenting it in real time. Not that they're telling us, oh, we're handing over, you know, like, uh, you know, deep secrets, uh, sources, methods, names of people. Uh, and people are showing up dead in Saudi Arabia that were on the lists that were given to him. Uh, he's trying to open a back channel to Russia. He's meeting with Eric Prince in the Seychelles, the UAE, and they're trying to open back channels to Russia, and maybe they'll use the Russian embassy in New York, and uh, uh, people are like, oh my God. Everyone's hair is on fire. Everyone's hair is on fire. And then it says, during the 2016 presidential campaign, Kushner was part of a group that met in Trump Tower with a Russian lawyer. Uh, claiming to have political dirt on Hillary Clinton. And during the presidential transition, Kushner had a meeting with the Russian ambassador at the time, Sergei Kislyak, and the head of a Russian state-owned bank under sanctions. And he applied for a security clearance and never told anybody about those meetings. Then he, he puts in uh, his FS80, SF-86 is the form that you have to fill out to get a security clearance. He puts in his, F, uh, his SF-86 and he omits all of this, doesn't put any of it in there. The Office of Personal Security, the, uh, Personnel Security that, that, that issues uh, the security clearances, 
uh, said that the uh, security clearance was changed to interim top secret until we can confirm that the Department of Justice or someone else actually granted a final clearance. While the someone else is the president, he ordered Kelly to issue a top secret clearance to a guy who was rejected by three different, uh, you know, groups: the CIA, the FBI, and the Office of uh, the, the Office of Personnel. And then after Rob Porter, he's downgraded again to limit his access to classified information. And that's when Kelly writes this five-page memo to document that he shouldn't get a security clearance, but I think they're going to give him one. I think they're going to give him one. And he revokes the temporary clearance. Kelly does. He revokes it. So that affects both Ivanka and Kushner, her husband, and they run around telling everybody, including Daddy, I don't like Mr. Kelly. Remember, there's all this uh, contra uh, in the in the press about how, oh, Ivanka doesn't like John Kelly, and Ivanka doesn't like Don McGahn, and Jared doesn't like Kelly. He wants Kelly out. Now you know why. Because Kelly and McGahn uh, were revoking clearances for these two because they felt that uh, they weren't trustworthy, as decided by the Office of Personnel, as decided by the CIA and the FBI. And so they run around, they'd start telling everybody that they were being targeted for petty reasons, <clears throat> that there was no legitimate concerns. And then they start going, Dad, Dad, Mr. Kushner and Ms. Trump both complained to the president about the situation. Current and former administration officials said in Mr. Kushner's case, Mr. Trump would often turn to other aides and say in frustration, why isn't this getting done? On at least one occasion, the president asked another senior official if the person could sort out the issue, and that official said no. No. Now the House Democrats are saying that they want Every single document that has anything to do with these clearances. So you think that the, the, the Kelly needs to turn over his memo? Because I do. You think Don McGahn needs to turn over his five-page memo? Because I do. The president sat there, and I mean, the lies are just, you know, they're legendary now, but he said... There's been a story in the news in the last two weeks about your son-in-law's security clearance. Did yeah. Did you tell General Kelly or anyone else in the White House to overrule security officials, the career? No, uh, I don't think I have the authority to do that. I'm not sure I did. Oh my God. But I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Okay. Um, you never. Jared's a good. I, I was, I was never involved with the security. I know that he, you know, just from reading, I know that there was issues back and forth. Uh, about security for uh, for numerous people, actually. But I don't want to get involved in that stuff. But he did get involved in that stuff. This was an interview he gave to Maggie Haberman of the New York Times. And, uh, you know, John Kelly has since said that he believed that Donald Trump's uh, uh, words to give Jared, uh, uh, Jared and Ivanka security clearances was an order, an order, Trump told Maggie Haberman right there, I was never involved with the security clearances. Uh, you know, I know that there was issues back and forth about security for numerous people, actually, but I don't want to get involved in that stuff. That's exactly what he said right there. Well, it turns out that the man that was in charge of the uh, White House uh, personnel office that, that you know, uh, uh, does issue the security clearance, his name is Mr. Klein. Mr. Klein said he overruled two security specialists who had rejected Jared Kushner's application based on the FBI's concern. A senior administration official confirmed the details of that. And Mr. Klein has now said he was acting on a directive sent down by the president. By the president. Now, what's really interesting is this goes back to uh, comments that were made by Jared's lawyer. Abby Lowell, whose name was invoked in the Michael Cohn hearing. 
Like when they were saying, who else knows about these things? Who else? One of the people he named is Abby Lowell. Abby Lowell is Jared Kushner's attorney. And Abby Lowell said that uh, they went through the normal standard procedures. Nothing was out of the ordinary about the clearances that were given to these two. Um, it turns out, according to the New York Times, that that is just not true. It's just not so. And Kelly and McGahn were documenting that in memos to, to self back in May of 2018, saying, I wouldn't give a security clearance to this person based on, uh, you know, the recommendations of the FBI, the CIA, blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm going to actually revoke his security clearance. And they did that after the Rob Porter thing. And you remember that Jared and Ivanka were running around going, Kelly is out to get us. Kelly is out to get us. Kelly is keeping us from our father. Kelly stands, you know, we used to be able to go in and out. Now we can't go in and out. Yeah. And Kelly knew why he was doing that. We didn't. And now we find out because he is trying to protect us from having classified, top secret, you know, eyes only, no foreign eyes on, on the information about sources and methods and intelligence and enemies of, uh, of, of our enemies and, 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 and uh, you know, purges that are going on in Saudi. I, I mean, this is just, this is mind blowing. This is so bizarre. And the people that still, you know, like I said, there's only 26% of these people in this country that are Republicans anymore. Republicans are a dying breed. There is no such thing as a Republican Party anymore. It's the party of Trump. And there's only 26% of the American people who identify as Republicans. And of those, 80% still support this man. And I'm trying to tell these people, he literally is handing out like candy some of the most closely held secrets that keep us safe at night to people who will, would give it to people who attacked us. Remember the Saudis, 15 of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 were Saudi Arabians. This is not a friendly government. This is not a government that the United States needs to give classified information to, nor is Russia a friend of the United States. Russia is having a proxy war with the United States in Syria. And, or, and, and North Korea is the largest exporter of weapons to Syria. And Trump is, is pledging undying warmth and love to the guy that literally tortured for one entire year a 22-year-old boy from the University of Virginia, Otto Warmbier, tortured him for a year in one of his gulags and says he believes the leader of, South, uh, of North Korea over the parents of Otto Warmbier. And that he also, not only did he use Lynn Patton as a prop the other day, To somehow, I don't know, try and prove he's not a racist by getting Mark Meadows to put this black woman behind him to stand up and say nothing, but just to look at the camera should focus on her and see her blackness. And that ought to tell you that Donald Trump is not a racist. I don't even understand how we get there from that. But now he's saying uh, the same damn thing about... his love for our country while he's giving props to North Korea who killed a 22 year old University of Virginia student, but he stood those parents up at his State of the Union and made them stand up too. And they were hysterical crying. I don't know if you remember that, but they were just beyond grief at that State of the Union as being proof that He's the guy to negotiate with Kim because he knows how brutal Kim is and nobody's been able to get anywhere with Kim because they're not strong enough. But Donald Trump is strong enough. And then he finds himself saying uh, that he's got this warmth and he doesn't see he doesn't understand why he shouldn't like Kim. I mean, he he literally said that to Sean Hannity last night. I mean, you know, I have to watch this crap so you don't. And it was the sickest thing I think I heard the president say in a long time, and he says some really sick stuff. 
But he sat there with Sean Hannity last night. What, what, what cut is that? I don't, I don't even know. He sat there with Sean Hannity last night and said he doesn't see why he shouldn't like Kim. And today he's tweeting like a maniac. That he, five. five. And, and today he's tweeting like a maniac. No, five is about the payments and Michael Cohen. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, there it is. He's, I like him. Why shouldn't I like him? <laughs> he's a character. He's and, laughing a and lot. He's, he's, a, he's a real personality, and he's very smart. He's sharp as you can be, and he's a real leader, and he's uh, pretty mercurial. I don't say that necessarily in a bad way, but he's a pretty mercurial guy. But he was talking to the press a little bit, and, you know, he's not big into talking to the press, but the press came in. Look, bottom line, I think he wants to get something done, but this wasn't the right time. And Vietnam, Hanoi, where we are right now, they have treated us so fantastically, so good. What's they've wrong with They've done such them? a great job. Mm -hmm. They're very proud of the job they've done, and they've really treated us. I mean, it's been an incredible two and a half days. You kept saying, and managing expectations, you said, I'm in no rush. No. I want the right deal. And the right deal for you is complete denuclearization that is verified and on-site inspections on demand. It's a much tougher deal to make. Maybe it won't get made, but that's the deal that we should have. And you can't give up everything if you don't get that. Now, we could have done large portions, but you're not getting that. So we'll see what happens. Again, the relationship is very good. He likes me. I like him. Some people say, oh, you shouldn't like him. I said, why shouldn't I like him? I like him. Why Get along you? great. We'll see what happens. Why shouldn't I like him? Because he's a murderer. He's a torturer. He runs camps. He runs gulags. You said it yourself. You said it yourself. He starves his own people. He's got camps. He's got prisons. He's got gulags. They sent Otto Warmbier back. He tortured this 22-year-old boy for a year, but Donald Trump takes his word that he didn't know about. I mean, this is crazy. This is like, you know, Kim's country is a hermit nation. It is a closed cult of about 4 million people. Donald Trump organization is also a closed cult with about, I don't know, 40 people. And whoever is willing to intimidate or, or shake down or torture or threaten people, that's, that's their friend. Why shouldn't I like him, he says. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Um, how many times did Mr. Trump ask you to threaten an individual or entity on his behalf? Quite a few times. 50 times? More. 100 times? More. Oh, my God. 200 times? More. 500 times? Probably. Over the, over the 10 years? Over the 10 years, he sure. asked you... And when you say threaten, I'm talking with litigation or um, an argument with... Um, Intimidation. A, a, a nasty reporter that has, is writing an article. Yeah. Uh, you know what he didn't tell you? He didn't tell you physical violence. And you know what? He did. He did. And he has said as much. He said that he would grab somebody by the throat and he would not let them go until... You know, and I don't know if that was a metaphor. I mean, who has metaphors like that? But, uh, you know, he names names in this thing. This, that, it, it is just the sickest administration that you could have a lawyer for the president, a guy who sat in this man's business on the same floor as this man for 10 years, 26th floor of Trump Tower. That is Trump's floor. And Michael Cohn sat there. OK, and, and so did Felix Sater. They're all, you know, they're all good. I mean, Michael Cohn's going back to testify March 6th. God only knows what they asked him to bring this time. OK, uh, and then they, they want to call this Matt Calamari, dude. They want to call this guy. And now, uh, you know, you're finding out some of the stories about this uh, thug. And, and for those of you who didn't see yesterday, let me show you uh, who Matt Calamari is. I mean, this man cannot put a sentence together with two hands uh, and, 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 and a map. He couldn't figure out, you know, a, a noun, a verb and an adjective to stick together. This is just so sad.
And another man who's done a great job for me is Matthew Calamari, my chief operating officer. Chief Matthew, operating officer, COO. Donald, you know I don't care for Jen very much. Got to be honest with you. Um, because, wow. Because, uh, well, I'm not doing too good, Harry. Why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> You're doing great, Matt. Who do you no, like? Who Matt, do you like of the two? Who do you like of the two, Matt? Which one? I like Kelly. I okay. think that, uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Donald. Holy crap. Okay, so here's a story we found uh, from BuzzFeed about, uh, you know, Matthew uh, Calamari. Uh, this is this is unfreaking believable, okay, that we have a president. I, no, no, I just, I just, those of you out there, you know, that listen because you think you're listening to the other side, I'm the other side for you. Um, just imagine I'm reading something about Hillary Clinton and somebody in the Clinton Foundation. Just imagine this. The Clinton Foundation was found to be so fraudulent that it got shut down, which has happened to Trump, and that the court found that Hillary Clinton should never be able to run a charity ever, ever again, or be any in any position of honor or trust in any charitable foundation ever again. This is what the court found about the Trump Foundation, not the Clinton Foundation, that sort of had a, a little hand in curing AIDS worldwide, just saying, but the Trump Foundation that has straw buyers to buy portraits of Donald Trump himself, okay? Just amazing. But here's, here's Matthew Calamari. Now, just imagine this is Hillary Clinton's uh, body man or the COO of the Clinton Foundation, okay? Just, just imagine, I'm reading you a story about somebody in the Clinton organization, all right? So this starts with Donald Trump's security guard, Matthew Calamari. So let's just say Hillary Clinton's security guard, Matthew Calamari. Okay? Once shoved, threatened, and held a 12-year-old boy and his mother against their will after her husband promised to go public with damaging allegations against the Trump organization, according to the family's account in FBI records and court filings. Just imagine what uh, Sean Hannity would be, uh, you know, talking about right now. Just imagine. You know, I, I was kind of dragged in a little bit into the Michael Cohen issue. I interviewed him many times on right. radio and TV. He was never my attorney. He did apologize to me. I mean, what is this? The, uh, you know, uh, you cover me, I cover you a tour? I mean, this is just amazing, right, Sean Hannity? I was dragged into the. He was never my attorney. No, he just uh, helped you buy... Uh, you know, uh, these uh, rundown apartments in Georgia so you could be a slumlord. He showed you how you could be a slumlord. He was never my attorney. Right, Donald? Right, Donald? He was never my attorney. Wait, it gets worse. It gets worse. For his attorney saying that in court. And, but I can tell you personally, he said to me at least a dozen times that he made the decision on the payments and he didn't tell you. Yeah. Told me yeah. personally. Well, he did. And he made the decision. And, and remember this, he's an attorney. Whatever decision he makes, you're supposed to rely on an attorney to make a decision. Somebody said one of the very good Republican members today said that, uh, you know, he's supposed to be an attorney. He's out there uh, doing all sorts of things. When you're when you have an attorney, you're supposed to be able to rely on your attorney. Attorney claim privilege. Well, it's, but it's also called reliance. And uh, <laughs> he just was not much of an attorney that I will tell you. He gave me bad advice over here, and I took it because, you know, I wanted to be president of the United States. I wanted to enforce all the laws, and, you know. And so when he told me that I could violate campaign finance laws and, you know, funnel money through a law firm, his uh, LLC, I said, yeah, sure. And I'm supposed to be able to rely on him, except that your accountant at the Trump Organization was the person who advised your attorney that they you should do it that way to avoid you being in violation of campaign finance laws, and now your attorney is going to jail. And they want to talk to your accountant, who, by the way, only has limited use immunity for that one time that he went before the grand jury, but it is on the Michael Cohn issue. So I don't know if Weisselberg can go to Congress 
without a subpoena, you know what I mean? I, I, uh, I just don't know. I mean, there's a lot of discussion about that, and who better to ask than Chris Christie? Who better to ask? They have no limit on their scope. Mm -hmm. Bob Mueller has a limit on his scope. It's yes. Russia and Russia-related activities. But that's Dan Second, why. Michael Cohen. Third, Rick Gates. They have two tour guides that can take them through the Trump business and, and personal Weisselberg. life. Well, Weisselberg, from what I understand, has a limited immunity, not a complete immunity. To Cohen. Limited immunity. Right. For so Cohen. you're saying that he may not want to talk about these other things. Uh, my guess is if I were Alan Weisselberg's lawyer, I'd say, give me total immunity, I'll tell you whatever you want. <laughs> Otherwise, would I'm we know, the fifth. Would we know what his immunity status is? We wouldn't. Um, I don't think they've announced it publicly. Right. Um, but I have heard... They definitely the, haven't announced it publicly. No, and I, I have heard that it's a limited immunity. So if that's the case, there's going to be a fight between the Congress and the Southern District of New York. But it has always been the Southern District that is the problem, that is the threat. So here you have what I was wondering yesterday, because it's never been public. And I told you we were getting, like, different uh, uh, information from different, uh, you know, uh, news outlets that Weisselberg was cooperating or that Weisselberg had limited immunity. Nobody knows exactly how the immunity for Weisselberg worked. It seems, though, that the, the smart money, let's put it that way, is on the fact that Weisselberg got limited use immunity for some grand jury testimony that he gave with regard to Michael Cohen uh, and nothing else. And that Weisselberg is working back at the Trump Organization as we speak, uh, and he's running the accounting, you know, he's, he's the accountant for the Trump Organization uh, as it's being managed by Beavis and Butthead, who are running it for daddy while daddy is bu busy b being president. But here you have... All these creatures, all these characters. So, uh, you know, I mean, everybody in, in the House now wants to call all these people to have them testify. And this calamari dude, he's the muscle. Now, what legitimate businessman do you know that has muscle who can't put a sentence together but is the chief operating officer? And all he represents is the ability to uh, 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 threaten people who would, uh, you know, uh, uh, go to the police or would go to the courts or would, uh, you know, be able to prove that you are a dirty businessman, that you are ripping people off. And that's what this, uh, this, this, this mother and son uh, were doing. They were, they were trying to go through uh, an office and get the, the, the information that the husband had put together that clearly showed that Donald Trump was ripping off people in one of the Trump buildings, the Trump Palace building, that there were financial improprieties at the Trump Palace, a skyscraper on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Okay, there was a man who worked there. He, was, uh, he worked there for four years. And he believed that he had evidence that the Trump company had ripped off the homeowners in Trump Palace for about $300,000. He worked for the Trump Organization. He was uh, superintendent of one of the buildings, the Trump Palace building, and he started to see evidence of financial improprieties. He started to see that the tenants were being ripped off by Donald Trump. And so he uh, was he was trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, file some sort of a claim on behalf of the tenants. Well, days before he was going to reveal this information to the board members at Trump Palace, uh, he said to his wife, uh, and, and, you know, he said to his wife, could you go to my office and get me some documents? I left them on my desk. Uh, and she said, why don't you go? And he said, you know, I'm sick. I, he, he, got, he got really, really sick, but he was going to brief the board. So she said, yeah, I'll go to your office because you're sick. So she took uh, her son with her, and she went to her, her husband's office to get some papers that he left on his desk. So she was in his office, her husband's office, legitimately there, her husband's homesick, to get these papers so he could make a presentation to the board at Trump Palace showing that Trump was ripping off the tenants. So she's in her husband's office, she's gathering the paperwork. This is according to a court case that he filed. All of a sudden, somebody is using a screwdriver to bust open the lock on her husband's office door and the door bursts open and there's a team of Trump security guys, and Matthew Calamari was with them. He's the he was. She said he was like a hulking, 
you know, presence. And he said he was head of security. And he pushes her little boy. He shoves him into a wall. And uh, Trump's brother-in-law, James Grau, is also part of the security team. And he's barking questions at this woman. He wants to know, who are you and why are you there? And there's another guard there named Michael Nickel. And he pushes them back when they try to get past them and leave. And uh, Trump's brother-in-law, James Grau, takes her purse from her, snatches it, and passes it over to Matthew Calamari. And uh, Matthew is standing there with uh, Michael Nickel and another guy named Dominic Pezzo. And they go through her purse. They're like ripping crap out of her purse. And the little boy starts to cry. And his mother faints. She just pass she just passes out right there on the floor. She's like over overcome because they just they're they're putting their hands on her her son and rifling through her purse and everything. And uh, finally she is able to uh, you know get out of there and, and call the police. And the police do come. So there's a police report. And the police report says that uh, Matthew Calamari threatened to harm the family if they spoke to police about what happened. This is uh, according to the lawsuit that they filed. The police didn't come for like an hour and a half. And finally, when the police came after an hour and a half, this woman and her son were let go. But they were being held uh, for an hour and a half by Matthew Calamari. I mean, what kind of a business is this? And why is he still the president? I just, what the f- But hey, everybody, enjoy the national emergency. This is, <clears throat> this is our second weekend. <laughs> I mean, it is overwhelming. There's so much crap going on. There just is. But if you need some comic relief, like I said, Trey Crowder might be coming to a town near you. Get some tickets. Go get some tickets and, uh, you know, because <clears throat> if we don't laugh, we're going to cry. Now, if you have a really twisted sense of humor, you could watch CPAC on C-SPAN. Oh, my God. It's just a laugh riot. These are cuckoo. These are conservative people acting crazy for cash. CPAC. And uh, we'll see on Monday. Uh, Like I said, you know what? The House is just getting started because we had a government shutdown for the first 35 days. Now they're back. Everybody's working. There's going to be a billion hearings. This is far from over. Bye, Stinkin' Podcast.